Creator, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Creator, for the people of Long Plain. The dancers and the singers who are going to be here. And we ask, Creator, that things go well. I'm Matty Matheson. I'm in Long Plain, Manitoba at a beautiful powwow. Have you ever been to a powwow? Eh, not like this one. New Jack, trying to figure this out in 20 minutes before they have the opening ceremonies. This is tiring. field. I'm in Portage La Prairie in Manitoba. I'm going to Long Plain, the First Nations Reserve. I'm going to the powwow. I'm going to ride a horse. Yeah. I'm going to learn how to cook Aboriginal food. I'm going to make a stew with bison and elk. I'm going to do what the Aboriginals do. I'm going to hang out, see what the culture is, and see what Canada is. These guys know Canada like no one else because it's Bears. How's that? <laughs> so I'm here in Long Plain. We're at the powwow, We're about to meet more Reese. People are coming, setting up for the powwow. What's going on, buddy? How's it going, man? You good? I'm good. Yeah, How man. was the trip? The trip was good, man. I'm happy to be here. So these guys are just setting up? Yeah. People are coming in. Got yeah. visitors from all over. Dancers, singers are going to be all here. Thousands of people are going to be here. Oh, yeah. It's going to be sure. amazing. Yeah. Do you want to give me a little tour of the res? Yeah, we can go for a ride. Let's go. All Let's right. hit it. Uh, Long Plain became Long Plain 139 years ago. How was it like growing up here on the res? For me, I actually enjoyed it. I had a lot of friends, a lot of cousins. But pretty tough in your teen years. Drugs are a big problem. What kept me on track was going to Pau. I was playing hockey. Chief Dennis Meaches and I are having a sweat tonight, so Maddie, if you want to join us. Oh, yeah? There'll be a... I'd love to do a sweat lodge. After my tour, we hit Spirit Horse Ranch to meet up with Maurice's uncle, the chief of Long Plain First Nation, Dennis Meaches. Chief. Welcome to Spirit Horse Ranch. Good to be here. So we're going to do a little bit of a sweat? Yeah, I'm just getting stuff ready right now with the horses. So. so we'll have to take some horses, ride the horses up to the sweat. What we'll do with you is probably put you on a wagon. What do you mean a wagon? A Too horse Too big wagon. for a horse? No, and I don't know your, <laughs> your horsemanship skills. So. My horsemen, they're good. I can, <laughs> okay. I can trot. Are you okay? Yeah. So we're gonna ride a horse out to where the sweat lodge is. Okay, buddy. Let's go. Yeah. Is that what you say? Yeah. Woo. I'm coming, Dennis. <laughs> What's the matter? Let's go, buddy. Let's go, buddy. Yeah. Yo, Chief Dennis, how am I doing? Come on, buddy. So what happened? I don't know. I think I'm too fat. <laughs> You're going to fall many times in your life. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do your best you can. Well, that's it, right? That's it. First Nations communities across the country are struggling. A big part of the struggles are economies. A big part of uh, struggles are identity. There's uh, a lot of challenges, but at the same time, there's a lot of promise. I mean, I, I believe in the young people of, of this country. Absolutely. Uh, First Nations, non-native, everyone. Could you just give a little 
insight into the sweat lodge and what it means to your people? It's a very important part of uh, our ceremonies. It's a cleansing ceremony. It's yeah. a rebirth, basically. The sweat lodge represents the womb, and as we're in there, and we're asking you know, for, for guidance from the Creator and blessing uh, for the land, for the people, yeah. you know, the spirit of our, our ancestors. I've recently only done a few sweat lodges. The stuff that I've gotten out of it, mm -hmm. the, the, the intentions that I've brought in there and left in there mm -hmm. and come out on the other side, Mm -hmm. uh, has, has changed my life. A lot of times we fall down and, you know, we get back up. Good? Yeah. All right. Let's get it. Dude. Okay. Uh, with yeah. the sweat, it's kind of like, you know, it's, I don't, it's not a, for me, it's a family thing, family, yeah. friends, and it's like I'm kind of a little bit uh, leery about filming that portion of it off the record. Are yeah, you, yeah, Are yeah. you filming? Uh, yeah, I can stop you. Yeah. yeah, you can stop, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For the Indigenous people of Canada, it is a sacred purification ceremony, connecting them to their ancestors and also their traditional way of life. If you can imagine someone trying to film your confessional, then you can appreciate how personal and how private these ceremonies truly are. And because of this, Chief Meaches asked us to stop filming, and that's exactly what we did. Standing here at the Watching you. I just got to participate in a sweat lodge. You're in there and you're you're dealing with just yourself and I'm beyond humbled being allowed to, to participate. I don't really have too many other words right now. It's an experience of a lifetime and, and I'm just I'm really humbled right now. Baby, don't say neighbor, please tell me it's gonna be After a sweat, it's a tradition to eat a meal. So we have returned to the ranch where Maurice's family was waiting with some soup and some bannock. So the uh, the bannock, we got bannock here, which looks amazing. So this is just your recipe? Yeah, it's my mom's. It's your mom's, my mom's recipe? recipe yeah. But she makes it better. She makes it, well mom's always make it better. <laughs> when I grew up, my best friend, he was Mohawk. And so we used to have bannock all the time, but his family always just called it ghost bread. It, just because it was like white fried bread. <laughs> maybe I can make like a nice stew. Do you think we'll be able to get some like elk or maybe some, yeah, we'll, some deer? We'll, we'll get elk for sure. A short drive from the Long Plain Reserve is All Natural Meats, a butcher shop specializing in bison and elk raised right here in Manitoba. I'm Maddie, so I'm here to see if I can get some elk meat. And what kind are you looking for? I want to make a big stew. If you want to come back, you have to use a robe. I, I can get these? robe. <laughs> I'll just Absolutely. go grab one for you. You got the big boy size? You want me to shine Tie up? Tie me up, babe. All right. Brandy, is this tight? Pop the collar. There, all done. Oh, and it just makes me look really strong. <laughs> I look really strong in this. Careful of the cow. Yeah. Whoa. It's a little cold. Yeah, needs to be. We got bison and elk out here in the prairies. It's killed right here in house. And then it's kept here frozen for your liking. And now we get to come here and get its bounty. Two of these. For sure. But certainly elk short ribs. This is going to be a stew. Woo! Bison short ribs. Oh, oh this is what I'm ribs. talking about. Elk short ribs. So we got cross rib roast. Oh. Elk tenderloin rib roast. OK. <laughs> I'm excited. I'll get it in bags. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you. Brandy, the best. When the word got out I went shopping, Dell, one of Long Plains elders, invited me to cook a stew with his wife, Sandra. How are you? I'm Maddie. Hi, Maddie, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, what's your name? Sandra. Sandra, awesome. Do you want to make some food? Sure. Watch out, why'd you do that? What do you have for me, Maddie? We got lots of ribs, so we'll make stew. We got one pepperette. Do you want a piece? Uh, no, I'll wait. You're good. I'm good. Yeah, me too. Okay. So, I guess I gotta start cooking. You do. Okay. I'll do it quick, okay? I stopped by the store. I got a new knife. I'm sure you guys have lots of knives. We do. Watch out. Okay. Deadly. <laughs> Everything looks okay so Everything far? Everything looks okay? You tell me as soon as I'm not doing something okay. You're making a mess in my stove. 
You gotta clean as you go when you're in other people's houses. They get mad at you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is good. I did the stew. Jed is the man, and he used to be a chef. He's gonna make a quick little rub, and he's gonna take care of the tenderloin. I put all like fresh herbs, salt and pepper, garlic. In native cooking, all we have is salt and pepper, and any fresh herbs that we can find in the bush. See this? This is wood sorrel. You guys ever eat this? No? This is wood sorrel. Put in salads and stuff. It's nice, it tastes like lemon, it's acidic, right? Tenderloin is the first piece of meat that comes off the deer when we get a deer. I'm out there, I'm listening for the shot. When I hear the shot, I start making my bannock. Yeah? Because I know the tenderloin's coming in. We're gonna make some bannock, which is a traditional fried bread. So we just need some salt and some sugars in there. So you see that, that's the amount. You can stir this up. Okay, our sous chef's over here. What are you guys I'm doing? Trying. You guys are making a mess. They're being taught today. So here you go. This is a okay. lifelong lesson right here. You don't want to over it, and then it becomes tough. Now, this is where you got to be careful, because this is hot. Bannock's going in. Look at that. Beautiful, eh? We got bison in elk stew. We're cooking elk stew with bison. We got some bacon. And some elk stew. That's, you guys sing some love, right, guys? Do you guys sing when you cook? Yeah. We're going to be singing, actually. You guys are going to sing? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah? I guess you guys can sing better than I can sing, can't you? Yeah. We're just trying the stew, OK? I'm not, there's a lot of pressure, kind of nervous, but here. Wow, that has a lot of flavor. Is that good? That is good. Yeah? Blow you got to try it. Blow on it. Okay, now try. Yeah, try it. Look, here, do it. What am I supposed to do? Dump this in your mouth? What is this kid? Never tried a soup before? <laughs> the stew is simmering. It'll be ready for tomorrow morning's ceremony. Today was a good day. So this is the stew I made last night. It's got elk and bison ribs. They just raised the tree to welcome the spirits. We're gonna have a feast. Maddie by trade is a chef. You're about to taste some real good food here. I'd like to offer a prayer. Thank you, Creator, for the food that we're about to eat, the nutrition that's going to give our bodies. We say thank you, Creator, to all the people who helped prepare this food. So ladies and gentlemen, we thank all of you for being here at the Long Plains Celebration 2015. We could feel the energy. That's going to be an outstanding time. So grab my wrist. Hold on. i got to introduce you. OK. What's your full title? What's your full my, name? My, my, my full name is Professor Stephen Prince. Stephen am, Prince? I'm a sixth degree black belt in Prince of Kitchen Martial Arts, fifth degree black belt in Jiu Jitsu, fifth degree black belt Taekwondo. There's going to be a lot of rowdy ass dudes probably coming to this. This man is going to make sure that this is a peaceful powwow, and he's going to show me some of the techniques to uh, stop a, a badass dude. Grab your hand. Okay. Grab it. Ow. And pull the other. Okay, Not that's right. Good. Okay. And then I escort you off like that. That's a finger lock. That's a finger lock. That's so the next, good. The next that one works. is say he grabs me. We come in. Okay. We break it in. Ow. Drop. Ow. Okay. Pick him back up. Uh, okay. I wrap it up. Ow. And I up okay. And, up, up, up. okay. And then I walk him off the property. Uh, okay. And this guy's. I'm not coming here drunk at all. This place sucks. Don't with this dude, he will break your arm. Have respect for the powwow. Ow. After old Stefan laid a beating on me, he took me to experience the OG Bannock Cut Indian Taco. Here's my auntie's concession stand, and this is the best Indian taco I've this ever This is had. the best one. This is the best one. Yes. Hey, how are ya? Oh, uh, not too bad. I heard you make a good Indian taco. Oh, one of the best. What do you think, a large or a small? For a guy like you, yeah. I think a large would be good. A large? Would you like to come back and see how I do it? I would love to. All right. Okay, I'll walk around. My brother makes the best bannock. 
That looks amazing. It's really, really good. Open it up. Oh, look how fluffy look at that. that is. That's fluffy. And then we put a little bit of the, we the meat. Our taco meat. It's a pretty uh, simple ingredient. Yeah. A little bit of iceberg lettuce. Can we get extra tomatoes? Sure. If you love, like. tomatoes. love tomatoes. Oh, oh my iceberg. goodness. Oh, baby. This is like Old El Paso times 3,000. Oh, Old El Paso, yeah. Right here is probably the best Indian taco in all of Canada. Canada's the best. Yeah. So the whole entire world, right here, Wes, is making the best Indian tacos in the world. See, I like to mash it around. Get it like everything. This is like seven layer burrito or... <laughs> That's incredible. Told you, best in Indian country. This is actually one of the best things I've ever had in my life. So I'm here with Maurice, we're walking around the powwow, and we get to do something pretty special. We get to meet Patrick, who's an amazing fancy dancer. A century ago, fancy dancing was created in response to a ban on Native American religious dances. Today, dancers like Patrick compete at powwows across North America. What's up? Maddie. I'm Maddie. Hey, Maddie. Are you hey. good? Yeah, I'm good. I heard you're the best fancy uh, dancer. Win a lot, I guess. Um, he, win pretty, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he wins a lot. Uh, but, That's a good sign. Uh, there's a lot of losing that came yeah. before all the, the winning and stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We sure, gotta, yeah. gotta learn how to do it. Fancy dancing comes from... It's actually a war dance. They used to, used to do these dances when they did a successful hunt or they came back from battle and won, okay. right? They'd come and celebrate and these warriors would test themselves on how fast they are, how long they could dance. So it's one right. of the more grueling dances to do. So do you think that I could maybe... Yeah, if you're willing to learn, I could teach you a few steps. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity for uh, some white guy in Toronto, you know? Like this is a privilege. This will be probably the first and last time I ever put a do-rag on. People go into like places like Coachella and they, they dress up like aboriginals. Yeah. I, I think a lot of lines are crossed. Yeah. When is the right time for a white guy to be wearing regalia? When you're at a powwow yeah. and you're part of the celebration, yeah. then it's okay, you know, because powwow is a, it's a gathering of communities and stuff like that. It's about so, that yeah. unity. Yeah, that unity. So I like to start off, I, I, I'll feel that beat and I'll hear it and get yeah. that bounce going first. Yeah. And then I'll put a little bit more bounce into it. Yeah. Right? And then you can move your feet to the to the drum with the bounce. And then you mix it up with a stick move. You can cross your legs like to the beat, boom, boom, boom. And the way you jazz it up. Ah! Fancy dancing is a lot freestyle. Right. Right? However that drum makes you feel, you interpret it through your, your movements. Okay. So all dancers, make your way to the Grand Entry lineup. We now go to the Dakota Hotel. If you would please. Dakota Hotel! have to go full out dancing, just trotting. It'll be tough. I'm really out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I know no one came to the powwow to see me dance, but being surrounded by the other dancers and feeling the beating of the drums, there's a lot of pressure to not <laughs> this up. All right. Yeah? Right behind me. Yep. Welcome to the dance arena, Maddie Madison. Holy smokes! Welcome to the arena, fancy feather dancer extraordinaire. Okay. Don't get too busy. Get around. Yeah, move your legs. Move your legs. There you go. Yeah, there he is. Holy smokes! Watch out for the dancer. And mid that special going to Maddie. Y'all dancing for second. <laughs> He's from New Mexico. Where are you from? Detroit? 
and he's from Detroit. So it's cool to see how the powwow brings people from all over, you know? I came here, I'm from Toronto, we got New Mexico, we got Detroit, we got people from different kinds of reses. I had fun, it was amazing. I was telling him it's, it's, uh, it's really amazing to be a part of this community. Yo, like my family, we don't have tradition. Like we have Christmas, you know? And that's like about like getting presents. Yeah. I'm like, there's no, nothing like this where it's like a full representation of your actual history. You look like a professional. Yeah, how are you, Chief? Hey, good, good? good, good, yeah. It's an amazing experience to be a part of something like this, this yeah. spiritual and this right. like, this uh, real, you know, yeah. it's pretty amazing. Good. Yeah. I think I need to sit back and just watch and enjoy the power. You bet, you bet, do that, yeah. <laughs> Creator, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Creator, for the people of Long Plain. I ask, Creator, that you watch over our young boys who are going to be singing. We ask you, Creator, if you can give strength to their voice. They're going to sing songs that the dancers are going to dance to. And we thank you, Creator. Miigwech, aho, hopida. You don't have to be a singer, sweet like me. I came to Manitoba as a spectator, here to watch a powwow. The people of Long Plain not only welcomed me onto their land and into their homes, they gave me a once in a lifetime opportunity to participate in their powwow. A powwow and the culture of Canada's indigenous people is truly a beautiful one. I'll always be grateful to the people of Long Plain. Stone with your name.